Good morning to all of you. Now let us come to our subject, Manufacturing Processes 2. Uh, we are continuing module 4, which deals with general purpose machine tools. And today our lecture will be dealing with kinematic system and operations of drilling machines. It is a very common machine tool. Now the specific instruction and our objectives of lecture today, this lecture after completion will enable the students to identify the basic purposes of use of drilling machines. What the main and other purposes of using drilling machines, then classify the different types of drilling machines available or used, illustrate the kinematic system of drilling machine and explain its working principle, state and visualize the common and other possible operations of various types of drilling machines. Now let us start with general purposes of using drilling machines. What are those main purpose of drilling machines is to originate through or blind straight cylindrical holes in solid bodies and or enlarge existing or pre-machine holes. Now let me <coughs> emphasize to originate through or blind holes, the originate holes that means there is no hole at all in a solid body. For example, say here is a solid body plate and we there is no hole at all. We want to make a hole like this. Now this hole can be through or this can be part like this. This is called blind hole and these holes are generally straight, straight cylindrical hole in solid bodies. Sometime Maybe there is a small hole existing, we want to enlarge the hole. That is also done in drilling machine. So uh, the main purpose of drilling machine is to originate through or blind holes which will be straight cylindrical in solid bodies and sometime enlarge some existing holes or some pre-machined holes of different diameter. So this, this can do drilling on different diameters of varying length or depth in different work materials in different metals and non-metals also but accepting very hard and very soft materials like rubber, polythenes, etc. Now there are many other purposes of using um, uh, this drilling machines which are boring, reaming, tapping, threads and many others which we will discuss later on. Now the classification of drilling machines. The drilling machines normally produce holes, through holes and basically straight holes but even then there are a lot of types, different types of drilling machines for different purposes, for different size and shape and all these things. Now let us have a glance on the different types of drilling machines and then we shall see subsequently the applications of those drilling machines. Now the general purpose drilling machines of common use, here you see that we are talking about general purpose drilling machines of common use and why they use that is first. Then we shall discuss on the drilling machines which are general purpose but used for some specific applications. Now let us have a look into the common and wide use of general purpose drilling machines. Here you see this one is a tabletop small, tabletop small drilling machine. Now this drilling machine here you see the diagram this is a small drilling machine of size around say uh, 1 feet to 3 feet 
and these are mounted on the table, either mounted or clamped or bolted on the table for rigidity and the spindle, this is the drill which is mounted on the spindle and the spindle is rotated by bell pulley system and the speed can be changed from say one, there can be three speeds, low, medium and high speed and the feed motion of the drill that is the downward motion is imparted manually by operating this lever either this direction or that direction. So, this feeding and withdrawal of the drill is done manually without any control of the feed rate and this is used normally for uh, small diameter holes say up to 10 millimeter diameter and power obviously is less because it is manually operated maximum say half kilowatt or 0.5 kilowatt or maybe maximum 1 horsepower in case of HP. These are used for you know so for repair work or one or two pieces job order product and all these things and small pieces and simple jobs of say uh, softer grades, very hard metals or very odd shape jobs are not machined in this process and it is not a lot production or batch no, mass production machine. It is a very ordinary piece production general purpose drilling machine. Next is peeler drilling machine. Now, this looks a peeler drilling machine looks like a peeler. Here you see this is the peeler, this is peeler which has got a circular section It is a tubular section. So, this is not very strong nor very rigid. So, this is basically an extension of the tabletop machine, it is taller and fitted on the ground, mounted on the ground or the floor or some foundation may be. Okay. So, this is a light working machine. The, the difference between tabletop machine and this machine is the wide gap between the drilling machine and the table. Also, the table can be moved up and down to accommodate larger or different types of jobs and this table can be swiveled also around this tubular column to accommodate different types of jobs of different length. So, this is slightly bigger or larger in size than the tabletop machine and it is obviously not a mass production and lot production um, type of drilling machine. It is a very uh, ordinary drilling machine for one or two pieces of light work. Diameter may vary from 3 to say 20 millimeter not beyond that power may be up to 1.1 kilowatt and since the long tubular column uh, job this is not very rigid. So, accuracy uh, is not expected and there may be chances of vibration and the table is movable as I told you already. Now, what is the next type? Here is a type called column drilling machines. This is a column drilling machine shown over here. This is very rigid rugged machine and quite big size and you know lot of work can be done in this drilling machine and of different diameter of drill, different depth of drill and we can machine different job of material, but it is a general purpose drilling machine with a very low production rate very ordinary production rate. It is not a mass production or batch production machine. The characteristics of this machine is strong because of the structure you see is very strong structure, very powerful machine to allow high speed drilling by um, a larger diameter drills in uh, say moderately or medium strong materials. It is rigid for high accuracy and this kind of drill is the most common. You will find in industries uh, these drills are most common. These drills have speed gear box and feed gear box. The speed gear box and feed gear box are confined in the drilling head to enable selection of speed. You can vary the spindle speed and you can also vary the feed depending upon the requirement and the speed and feed can be changed. Quick change of speed and feed with the help of the speed gear box and feed gear box is possible and this feed gear box also enables automatic change of feed which is not possible in the previous drilling machines I discussed. Wide range of speed and feed are available in the speed gear box and feed gear box and the blanks, the blanks here is a rigid and large table, the bed on which there may be or may not be a table, but large bed very strong rigid where very simple to very odd and heavy type jobs can also be mounted and comfortably machined. So, this is a very common type. What is the next type? Is a radial drilling machine. The radial drilling machine, here you see that 
uh, <coughs> this is the tubular column. This is the tubular column, this one, but here the tube is very thick and large diameter and the wall thickness is also quite large. So, this is very rigid, okay. This on that, this is the arm. Here is an arm, radial arm, which moves up and down manually or it can be powered movement. Then the drilling head, the drilling head here, this is called drilling head, which holds the drill spindle here in which the drill is mounted and is subjected to rotation. The entire drilling head is mounted on the radial arm and this can move inward and outward from the drill axis. Not only that, as this along with this radial arm, the drilling head moves upward and downward to have large gap between the two drill and job or the stroke length. Not only that, further this radial arm can be rotated about the column, rotated about the column say about 300 degree, theoretically 360 degree, but it can be rotated 300 degree easily. Now you understand because of ability of the drilling head to move over up and down over a long distance inward and outward radially and then swinging around the column, this allows very large work volume, a large work space where the position where the drill spindle can be positioned for doing the work, can work on odd shape and size jobs. Even if the job is very large and odd shape and cannot be mounted on the bed itself, it is outside. Suppose it is so large that some work has to be done elsewhere, then the, drills, the drilling head will be shifted either upward, downward or radially or say swinging and you can do the work. Again this spindle, this spindle may be actually the versatility of this machine can be enhanced further by looking into the spindle, by having different type of spindle. The spindle may be vertical and fixed, only vertical okay? and this can be swiveling type. That means this spindle can be rotated, it can be rotated, this can be rotated like this to get some inclined hole if one we want to make and tilting is also there. Now this is called swiveling and tilting is this direction. So the drill can be straight, the spindle it can be swiveling type and it can be tilted type that enhances the versatility of the drilling machine. So this, this, this radial drilling machines are uh, used mainly for batch production or piece production of large jobs, odd shape jobs. Now CNC drilling machine, what is CNC? Computer numerical control, it is a very modern machine, machine tool concept that since 1970 and 75 onward, this concept of computer numerical control in machine tools have come up, you know, to cope up with the demand for batch production or what is called flexible automation. The present trend is batch production which needs flexible automation. That means the automatic system should be capable to change quickly, easily, quickly and inexpensively to meet the requirement of a new product. Okay? Normally in fixed automation, this is very difficult. Now the CNC drill machine, different types of machine tools can be CNC controlled, say lathe, CNC lathe, CNC milling machine, CNC drilling machine, CNC grinding machine, CNC uh, broaching machine. Now drilling machines are also can be CNC. What are the characteristics of this? Flexible automation, that is speed, feed and movements, all the movements can be programmed and controlled very easily, quickly as simple by simple program unlike say other kind of conventional machine tools. These machine tools are very rigid and strong, made a strong structure. So the process capability is high. This kind of drills uh, produce very high accuracy and less vibration. These are programmable so that you can easily change from one product to another. This machine tool is really very modern, came only recently, are very sophisticated and obviously expensive. Now these machines are very much suitable for piece production and batch production which is the trend of the present and future. 
So, CNC drilling machines are coming up in that way, they are very useful machines. Now, so far we talked about the drilling machines which are of very common use of wide application. Now, we shall discuss the drilling machines uh, general purpose, but those are used for little more specific applications. It is not regularly done, but sometime and at, uh, as and when required it is done and for specific application as and when required. For example, say hand drill, hand drill that means this drill is held in hand. Now, this is a portable drilling device. Now, here you see if we cannot call it a drilling machine, it is actually a small device okay, which can do drilling work and the entire setup shown over here, this is the drilling, this is the drill bit. Okay. Suppose we want to make a hole in a switchboard, some holes here. Now, it cannot be taken to the drilling machine, not drilling machine can be taken to this spot. So, in situ the hole has to be made as a few holes and then this drilling device called hand drill, you know held in a hand normally is brought in position and then the hole is made. Okay. By pressure the feed is given, by pressure. Now, what are the characteristics? These are portable number one, these are small, so small it should not be called machine tool, but it can be called a device. Now, this is high speed, here the rotation should be high speed, so that the force that come onto the spindle is much less. High speed, now this high speed can be accomplished by high speed electric motor or where there is a chance of you know hazards or some chemical gases which can burn because of some electrical spark inside if there are any. Then this the spindle is rotated by aerator system, aerator is simply just like a turbine operated rotated high speed by pressurized air, this is called aerator and this cannot give high torque, but it, uh, at high speed you can rotate and make holes and this is very necessary for hazardous environment because there is no electric uh, spark or electricity anywhere. Okay. Now, the gang drilling machine, now the gang drilling machine from the name itself you understand that a number of drills, a number of drills are used simultaneously. So, this is little more productive than the conventional machine tools, general purpose drilling machines I already discussed. The gang drilling machine is a little more productive, it can do for work faster. Now, you look the principle, here instead of one spindle, there are three spindles, one, two and three. So, there are more than one, two, three, even it can go up to six spindles and they will be generally in a row, in a general row and the work piece, suppose a plate you pl place under here and then all the spindles will move simultaneously, okay, will move simultaneously and these spindles can be used in two ways, progressively and uh, parallel. Parallel means, suppose you want to make some holes of same diameter and the long bar. So, you place the bar first here under the drill and you move the drill simultaneously. So, you get three holes. After that, you shift the bar or the job so that three more holes can be made. That means, productivity is made three times. Now, this can be used in another way. So that is called progressive, progressively. How? Suppose you want a, to make a bigger hole of diameter than this. So, if this is so big, you should know you maybe say 40 millimeter or 30 millimeter. So, ideally, we should make a small hole, then enlarge the hole, and then finally enlarge the hole in three or four stages. So, this drill will be very small, and this will be little uh, larger, and this is the largest final. So, you take a bar to be drilled, and then you push it, bring it here, maybe small hole, then you push it here this will make the, this hole will come over here, this will be enlarged and this will make another new small hole. Then you shift it here, then this will make the final larger size and the small size will be bigger and this one will make another fresh small hole. So, the productivity will be here also three times, but here we have to remember that for this kind of job one, one jig has to be it. On the job there should be a plate like called jig has to be used 
to keep the location same and the tool guidance and all these things accuracy. So, what are the characteristics? Progressive or parallel drilling is a faster production because three drills work simultaneously, use of a jig is a necessity and suitable for batch production and lot production that is productivity is higher. Now, this is another little high productive drilling machines called turret type drilling machine. You know turret lathe. Now, turret lathes can be horizontal normally, some, but sometimes the turret lathes are made vertical to save space and particularly when the job is very large diameter or the chuck will be very large diameter, the turret lathes or the boring mills are made vertical. Here also this shows the drilling machine, drilling machines are as such vertical. So, this is also vertical axis and there is a turret and the turret has got number of holes may be 6, 5, 6 up to 10 holes and into the holes, in the holes the cutting tools like drills are mounted, not necessarily these are all drills, there can be drill, some similar tools like a boring tool or a let us say a rimming, a rim cutter or a, say countersinking tool can be mounted and the job will be mounted on this table. This table will move either in x direction or in y direction and the, the entire turret will move vertically up and down along with the drill. Now, after one tool is used say a small drill, then it will go back, then this will rotate little bit and call indexing and next tool will come in position and do the subsequent operations. In this way, if in any job say four or five operations are needed, say small drill, then secondary enlargement, tertiary enlargement, then boring, then rimming and then finishing further. So many tools will be used consecutively. So, this kind of turret is best suitable for that purpose. Now, the table movement can be you know uh, mechanical or hydraulic or electro hydraulic or nowadays these are driven by numerical, numerical control and the entire machine is controlled by computer. So, the whole thing becomes computer numerical controlled or CNC drilling machine. So, this turret type drilling machine in short is a vertical axis, it, is, it possesses a turret which moves up and down uh, along with the cutting tools and it is time to time indexed to bring the tools in position sequently, sequentially and the, it can be ordinary type or it can be CNC type. Now, multi spindle drilling machine, this is really a special purpose drilling machine, not exactly special purpose, uh, this is single purpose and combination of single purpose that is only drilling and uh, maybe slightly different than drilling, slightly boring or counter sinking kind of operation and uh, this is used for large lot production. So, this is the in between say batch production and mass production and this is a single purpose to special purpose uh, machine tool. Here, multi spindle that is large number of spindles, maybe say up to 10 or 12 spindles, all are vertical, you know, and they are working. Suppose you want to make number of this is a plate, this is a top view, you want to make number of holes of different size, okay, different size at different location, say 8 holes, it can be of different shape also, circular shape. Now, this plate. So, this will require large number of holes of different diameter at different location, maybe at different depth all right and this is a large number of pieces have to be produced repeatedly. The same job has to be produced repeatedly and this is called mass production and this plate has to be mounted first on this first has to be mounted on this table and then there should be a jig, this will be covered by a jig having some holes already all right, according which will be pre-made according to the job to be made. For each job, type of job there should be a separate jig to be made which will also resemble the same job. Now, if this jig has got number of holes and bushes through which all the drills you know they come inside and do the necessary drilling operation. Now, here you see the how it is accomplished, there is a central gear, now this is the motor which rotates a central gear here, this is a central gear and there are some planetary gears which rotate which are 
shifted around this circle and this can be rotated about the axis and this is one those spindles and these spindles again transmit rotation to these spindles through another set of pair of gears. So, the location the circle in angular rotation position and the radial position of the spindles can be varied by moving this axis and all these are done according to the job to be done by the for the location of the holes and this has to be decided and depending upon the diameter of the holes to be made different size of drills are mounted on the different spindles and depending upon the depth of the hole to be made these drills are used at different height because the entire thing moves simultaneously downward and this will be at different height so that the holes of different size different depth can be made and the entire thing moves up downward the power. But sometime you know this machine is so big that moving the entire head upward downward may be little difficult and not very economic. In that case the job that is mounted on the blank along with the fixed jig is moved upward for the feed motion for the cutting action and after cutting action it is moved down and the spindle head remains in one place which is quite heavy and not. So, this is the machine tool multi spindle machine tool where the, the number of spindles may vary from say uh, 4 to 12 even more and this is used for mass production or large lot production. Now, micro drilling machine. Now, micro drilling machine is not really micron or micro size. Micro here means very small drill, very small, maybe say about uh, uh, maximum 1 feet height or even say 6 inches, 6 inches to 1 feet height. And this is, it looks like this. Here you can see that this is the base, or this is the base, okay, heavy base, which can be directly placed on the table or it can be grouted on the table to make it fixed and then there is a rod like column and this is the drilling head. This drilling head can be moved up and down, moved up and down with the help of a lever that is for that is necessary for the feed motion. Now, here the motion is transmitted bell pulley system and normally one or two speeds are available at one high speed one low speed accomplished by this motor comes through the bell pulley which has got two pulleys or two grooves to give two different speeds, but this rotates at high speed normally because uh, if the speed is increased then the force on the drill comes down the thrust force comes down torque and thrust. So, speed should be high because it is operated manually and the small jobs of this kind of job can be mounted here with the help of a small vice and you can do the drilling of the manual operation. It is just like a tabletop drilling machine, but of much smaller size and this is used for very very fine work that is very small work say one or two pieces have to be made or one hole has to be made. So, this is related to repair work or electrical work, electric fitting work like that. Now, the deep hole drilling machine. Now, making deep hole is a problem it is not easy. Now, why, when we call it a, a hole a deep. Now, the, the hole has got two dimension one is the diameter and other one is the length, length and diameter. So, if the length is too large compared to the diameter then it is called deep hole. Say L by D, L is the length and D is the diameter. If the L by D ratio exceeds say 10, even 8 we call it deep hole and the lot of problems arise. Now, when we require such kind of deep hole where we need? We need deep holes in case of say uh, barrel of guns, barrel of rifles <coughs> sorry, and uh, the, the oil holes in crankshafts, oil holes in bearing housing. Then we need very long holes, long, length is very long and high and diameter is very small. This is called large L by D ratio. Now, the main problems in default drilling as I already told that Main problem is chip clogging. Now, when we make a deep hole inside a body, 
say this is the drill bit it comes up to this much then the chips that form here that may be clogged here may be jammed and if the chips are jammed in the flutes then there will be no cutting action and then the cutting will be actually very uh, defective and the cutting fluid that is normally used for cooling and lubrication that may not reach the cutting zone if the chip gets clogged. So the poor cutting fluid action that also hampers cutting action and as a result finally because of the clogging of the chip and absence of cooling and lubrication and the drill as such is very slender very weak slender drill may easily break. So this is a very frequent phenomena very regular phenomena in default drilling the main problem that chip breaks due to chip clogging and poor cutting fluid action. Now these machines are normally so these problems have to be solved okay how by chip clogging this drills will have to be with a large helix angle large helix angle and the drilling has to be done intermittently first to just proceed little bit say one centimeter you withdraw the drill clean all the chips and all these things then you again push it again lift it again push it again lift it so you keep on cleaning the chips don't allow the chips to clog secondly the cutting fluid has to be applied profusely all right and not only that under pressure and sometime to uh, reach the cutting fluid at the end the drill tip this has to go through the drill is made hollow through the hole pressurized fluid is passed through to reach the cutting zone. So then this problem will be overcome anyway these drilling machines are normally horizontal horizontal axis because the hole is big the drill is big and the whole spindle is big so if it is vertical then it will be too slender the whole machine will be too slender and there is the lack of rigidity so accuracy and all this things will loss so these are made horizontal high speed spindle to reduce the cutting force because if the force is large the slender drill may buckle or break high rigidity so that there is no chance of any vibration or buckling tool guide since the guide tool is very long and slender some the tool has to be guided the tool has to be guided through the guide the tool will move so that this lateral movement is prevented pressurized cutting fluid through the drill one or two holes are made through the drill through that the hole is the oil is passed and both ordinary and cnc machines are feasible but nowadays this default drill is are converted or in, uh, made in um, with cnc control for accuracy and productivity. So in defense they use a lot of say CNC uh, default drilling machines for boring and drilling the guns, barrels or anti aircraft gun, rifles and so on. Now let us come to very important aspect of lecture today that is kinematic system. Now just now you heard so many types of drilling machines very small to very large manual to automatic control and up to CNC control very resilient to very rigid okay horizontal vertical uh, dealing with different types of drills and the diameter but the kinematic diagram is more or less say in say uh, where this there is a feed gear box and speed gear box here you can see this is the speed gear box and feed gear box that means the speed and feed uh, can be changed frequently depending upon the requirement and feed can be changed or adopted automatically like radial drilling machine, column drilling machine and uh, automatic drilling machine, turret head and so on. So this is the kinematic structure of very common type of drilling machines basically column type drilling machines and to some extent radial drilling machine. Now what are there inside? Now the kinematic system, the kinematic system as I told you earlier also in our previous lectures that that is this arrangement the kinematic system of any machine or machine tool deals with only motions transfer of motion and transformation of motion like say from rotation to rotation, rotation to translation, translation to rotation, rotation to oscillation and so on and transfer of motion from one point to another point from the source to the drill cutting point. So that is called kinematic system. Now let us go into this kinematic system. 
Now, this is the drilling machine, okay. This is a column drilling machine. Okay. What are the main parts? This is a power source, it's a motor, only motor. We are excluding at this moment, we are not discussing at this moment this uh, uh, lubrication or other kind of you know, drive, only power drive that is a single motor. This is the cutting tool drill. Here, this is the only machine tool where both the cutting motion and feed motion are given to the tool. So, the drill bit here that is made to rotate and the same drill is made to move down. The work piece, the work piece remains completely stationary in such kind of drill. Now, for, so this drill is mounted in a drill socket. The drill is mounted in a drill socket here. The drill socket is fitted into the spindle. This is called the drilling machine spindle, which has got a long bar at the tail end, just which is plined. I am coming to that. Why? Now, the spindle is partially hollow here. So, the drill is or the drill socket is fitted into this taper hole. Now, the drill spindle has to be rotated to rotate the drill, where from the drill spindle achieves or attains the motion. The drill spindle is connected to the motor through a gearbox called speed gearbox. This is the speed gearbox, okay, where the speed is not only transferred or transmitted, transmitted to the drill, it is also splitted. Motor rotates at a constant RPM, but drill may require different RPM, very slow, very large or very high depending upon the work material, tool material, tool diameter, machine tool condition. So, there is a provision that is called speed gear box, which enables splitting the or reducing or increase the motor speed to a high or low value and with the help of some cluster gears. So, this is how the spindle is made to rotate. Now, this is the enlarged view of the speed gear box. So, the power comes from the motor. This is a reversal mechanism which really converts uh, say uh, the rotary motion from clockwise to anticlockwise or maybe anticlockwise to clockwise. So, when we need clockwise motion, so the clutch will be operated in this direction. When we need say anticlockwise, when say for producing threads by tapping, we need this anticlockwise rotation. So, the clutch will be moved and we can get clockwise and anticlockwise motion. Now, the speed comes to the first shaft. Now, through the pair, this gears, we split into two. Then again, it is split into two. Now, again, finally, split into three. So, how many speeds we get? So, two into two into three. So, this is a 12 speed gearbox. And the power comes from the final shaft to the pair of gears. Through the gears, this spindle goes. Now, the spindle is splined. Why? Because this spindle will move up and down. So, this will move up and down along while it is rotating. So, this spline shaft will allow the movement of the spindle up and down through the gear without hampering the transmission of rotation. So, transmission rotation will continue, but the drill spindle can be moved up and down through this gear with the help of this spline. Then the feed motion, the drill has to be moved up and down. This is actually done, the spindle is mounted in a quill or barrel. This is a box like which moves up and down. Okay. And this has got a rack on his wall and is on the rack there is a pinion. When the pinion is mounted on a shaft, when the shaft is rotated, the pin is rotated clockwise or anticlockwise along accordingly, this quill along with this spindle will move up or down. Okay. So, this shaft is rotated by another war wheel that is rotated by one worm and that can be rotated by a wheel manually. So, this by operating this wheel manually, you can rotate this pinion and make this spindle move up and down. So, manual drilling is possible. Now, if you want it to automatic, then, then the speed comes from, you have to use this feed gear box. This is a feed gear box. This is a feed gear box. Okay. Now, explaining. The power is coming from this spindle, final spindle shaft through a reduction because feed motion is very slow. It is brought to the shaft through a feed reduction mechanism. So, that is what is called, this can enable the movement upward or movement downward. That means, the pinion has to be rotated upward, uh, sorry clockwise or anticlockwise to move this spindle downward and upward. So, to change this direction of rotation of this pinion, 
this clutch is operated this system is operated this clutch is operated this clutch can you move either this way or that way that will make this spindle rotate either clockwise or anti clockwise now that will be transmitted to this shaft into two that will be again splitted into three so this spin this shaft can be rotated at any one of the six speeds and that will convert into feeds now if you engage this clutch now this rotation reduced rotation will be transmitted to this pinion through this worm wheel and this worm okay and this will be done then defunct now you can change this uh, feed by operating the cluster shift in the cluster gears so you can have any one of the six different feeds okay and this is the bed on which the job is clamped either in a vise or directly by clamping and rigidly mounted and this is the column which is very rigid and this is the base of the drilling machine and the base is fitted uh, clamped on the foundation concrete foundation so this is the kinematic structure of drilling machines now it varies machine to machine or manufacturer to manufacturer here we have shown 12 speed gear 12 speed gearbox that means spindle can rotate at 12 different speeds but there are drilling machines if wanted it can be 18 speed it can be 24 speed similarly the feeds can be increased from 6 to 8 to 12 and so on by having different cluster gears now the application of drilling machines applications or operations the various kinds of operations or applications possible in drilling machine now this is very important because those who will use the drilling machine they should know about it now the drilling through the primary is drilling through or blind holes now what is i am reminding you that if you want to make a hole suppose this is a rod this is a plate or a block you you want to make a hole up to this much by a drill okay then this is called blind hole if you want to make full length up to bottom then this is called through hole so drilling machines are basically mainly used for drilling holes all right which can be through which can be blind and this is the most common application of drilling machine and this hole again this hole as i shown this is straight hole okay now this can be uh, taper this can be taper hole this can but taper hole is very rare very occasional but by it has, done, it has to be done by special drill but straight hole is most common and sometimes stepped hole is also made step hole that hole means say this is the work surface we make a one diameter hole then another diameter then another di diameter final so the diameters are varying at different position of the portion of the hole okay this is a stepped hole and sometime i already told this hole is made very deep okay of a small diameter but very large depth so this is the various kinds of holes now in addition to making holes what else can be done centering that is done for making small holes in the job to be turned in a lathe boring for enlargement of holes then counter boring and counter sinking this will be discussed in more detail then reaming for finishing by reamer and tapping for cutting threads internal threads in knots and so on so all these things will be discussed now classification of drills and drilling operations for different drilling operations different types of drills are obviously required now the drills have to be classified different types you know few dozen types of drills are available how do you classify this can be this classification can be made in different aspects according to size according to length according to aspect ratio according to material and so on now let us go in syst systematically according to the classification of drills according to material now the drills can be made of different material high speed steel okay you know the high speed steel was introduced in 1905 by F W Taylor which contains about 18% tungsten 4% chromium vanadium sometimes little bit cobalt is also added and later on as a high speed steel and uh, these are very tough and strong since drills are very slender tool and geometry is very complex so high speed steel 
uh, with its toughness, formability and strength, tensile strength, ten transverse rupture strength are most appropriate. So most of the drills or the tools those are used in drilling machines are made of high speed steel even today though the cutting speed is not that high as possible. Then comes cemented carbides which are produced powder metallurgically. These carbides can be uncoated, can be coated tools. The diamond, sometimes for making very small holes in exotic materials, diamond is used where other tools cannot do work because of hardness of the material or special to the material and size of the hole, etc. So diamond is very occasional, very rarely used only for very special application like very fine holes or for very exotic materials. But diamonds, again I remind you that diamond tools are never used for machining steels like material. Then the diamond will be graphitized. Now we can classify the drills according to size. Not very clear cut demarcation is available uh, or used, but anyway there is a uh, generally we pe people call it micro, micro drill. What is the micro drill or micro drilling when the size of the drill or size of the hole will be around 25 micron to 500 micron. 500 micron means I remind you is half a millimeter. Now you can imagine what is the size 25 micron. To that small size drilling is possi possible and is called micro drilling. For that special drills called micro drills are available, made available, moderate. That is 3 to 25 millimeter really most of the drilling work we do in industries they are within 3 to 25 millimeter. So this is the most widely used region and with this size of drills are used in plenty in the workshop and market. Large, occasionally we drill large holes. Normally if the hole is too large say bearing or something or bearing housing have to be made then a hole is made by drilling originated then it is enlarged by boring operation. So drilling if to be done to a large extent then maximum 40 millimeter. Occasionally maybe 45 millimeter some manufacturers or some users may be using but normally 25 to 40 millimeter we call it large diameter and this means that there will be large force, large torque, some machine to be very powerful, rigid alright. So this is not a mass production machine. Now the classification according to number of flutes. Now this is the you know the drill is, has got fluted. The drill, this is the drill. This is the axial view. This is a one flute and this is a another flute. And this flute continues along this flute continues helically. <coughs> Sorry. And then how many flutes are there? The flutes actually provided for removal of the chip for this because this is the cutting edge will produce the chip. How this will be removed from the hole? Through this cavity or flute, these chips will pass out. And secondly, the flute angle, the helix angle, the flute angle that is that governs the rake angle of cutting tool. Now according to number of flutes, two fluted most common, very ideal and most common. Single flute very rare, this is used to make the drill bit very strong and rigid. For example, gun drill, default drill, crankshaft hole drill, etc. Sometimes three or four flutes are also used, these are called slot drills, okay. Slot drills to reduce the load per tooth sometime and these slot drills are, make, are used for making holes with flat end like this. Normal drills make a taper, a cone type, but this makes a flat. Sometimes these slot drills are also used to make some slots. If this slot drills look like sometimes uh, to some extent uh, end mill cutters. According to helix angle of the flutes, normally it varies from 20 degree to 35 degree. I already told that this helix angle really represents also governs the, the rake angle. You know for cutting ductile material with a long chip, large rake angle is necessary. So the helix angle should also be very large. So this will not only enable very good removal of the chip, easy removal of the chip, but also help reduce the cutting force by virtue of large. large helix angle, the usual helix angle up to 35 degree. What is the large helix angle? 45 degree up to 60 degree. These are used are suitable for long drills, for default drilling 
in soft materials or uh, yes or for making holes in very soft material like aluminum uh, copper or their alloys so the helix angle large helix angle means lesser force but if we increase the helix angle the break angle will increase chip disposal will be better but the strength of the drill will decrease so this will be used for long drills and soft materials small helix where large helix is prohibited for harder materials when you make hard machine harder materials so the core of the drill has to be made harder strong and that means this small helix will be there zero helix yes when the work is really very hard very hard or we want to do spade drilling spade drilling means you know this is the rod and then this is the drill bit the plate like is a plate like okay so this is the spade drill now the spade drills are used for large production and harder materials sometimes micro drill for very small drills also this helix angle is avoided because the micro drills are as such very small in diameter and weak so they have to be retained strong by zero helix next is according to length of diameter length to diameter ratio l by d ratio okay general normally l by d ratio should be within 5 to 10 that is maintained okay neither very small nor very large if the l by d ratio is too large the drill will become weak if it is too small the chip removal will be difficult long drills as i told you that this l by d ratio for deep holes there the ratio should be more than 10 it can go up to 25 the ratio short drills where the l by d ratio will be very small say about say center drills like center drills two or three according to shank type that straight shank and taper shank sometimes the shank of the drill is tapered to or sometimes it is straight when it is straight shank then it is held in the chuck otherwise it is socket or directly into the spindle now the classification of drills again according to specific use this one shows a specific use this is a center drill this is called central drill very short drill and this makes this hole this makes the hole necessary we provide it at the end of the job to be turned and this hole is used to support this center which has to be mounted into the head stock or tail stock this is called center drill and one taper is to be made here then comes you know step drill so if you want to make step drill say one diameter the hole has to be diameter has to be changed so up to this much the diameter is this much and then diameter is reduced we can use other step drill or subland drill this is drill which makes you know in one stroke two two type then half round drill half round this is half round drill uh, and this is called half round drill this one half round drill then gun drill this is gun drill and crankshaft drill this one these are basically long drills where l by d ratio is very large and only one uh, cutting edge is there one flute is there and this may be two flutes but the base is very strong and this is called half round various types of drills now this is a tripping tool now what is tripping tool tripping tool is a pipe like cutting tool the pipe like cutting tool suppose you want to remove this material this is the hole has to be made so what you do you take a cutter pipe like okay a pipe like cutter and then just called cutting edges here so when this will rotate this will remove material only from this region only from this material remove and the central material remain unmachined so you can get an extra core so this is one way of remove, making large hole by removing small material but this is feasible for softer materials so this is one practical type of machine of such a cutter called tripping tool now further use of drilling machines other than general purpose so this is called come to slot drilling and slotting as i told you already the boring after drilling enlargement of hole by putting a boring tool in the drill spindle instead of a drill you can do boring you can change the diameter of the boring tool counter boring this is the example of counter boring 
So you made a hole, then you enlarge the diameter at the top end to accommodate, say, the uh, bolt head or some nut. Sometimes it is tapered to put some screw, and it's called counter sinking. Now spot facing. Here is a surface at the top of a hole which has to be flattened. So this is called, you know, spot facing operation. Then comes for the, the rimming. Rimming means finishing. These are various rimmers, which looks like, you know, to some extent drills, but there this uh, this this has got a, not a taper cone. These are just like long milling cutters, and they are fitted into the drill after drilling because drilling do not give, does not give very good high accuracy and finish. So this has to be finished sometime. Even even after boring, you don't get good enough. Say uh, surface finish and accuracy. Then the finishing work directly after drilling or drilling and then subsequently boring, finished by these cutters called reamers, a rod like, and they have got uh, edges or ribs which are nothing but cutting edges. This is a small one. There are different types: straight fluted rose reamer, this one; straight fluted chucking reamer held in chuck, slightly bigger; straight fluted taper reamer, it is slightly taper to uh, finish the taper holes. For taper gibs and all these things, and a straight fluted hand reamer operated manually in a lathe sometime, and expansion reamers where this diameter can be slightly adjusted within few microns. Shell reamer, this is the basic tool on which the reamer part can be removed and fitted. So, this is engaged and disengaged of different diameter. You can choose it and fix it. And the last one is adjustable insert blade. The blades, the separate blades available in the split. Which are fitted into the grooves provided into the slot onto the body, and this can help enable change in the diameter or replacement of the worn out cutting tools. Now, next is tapping. The tapping means cutting internal threads, say nuts. The small nuts have got say uh, the, the internal threads. How this thread will be made? You can make it in a lathe, all right. You can make it in drilling machine if you want to make it in large lot production or mass production. Then. This has to be done in a drilling machine, of course, with the help of some drilling, the tapping attachment. The tapping attachment is fitted first into the drill spindle, and then the tap tool is fitted at the end. Now, here we need two motions. During cutting motion, the rotation and translation, and during return motion, it should rotate in the opposite direction and to gradually come up. The tapping attachment enables all these movements. So, this tapping is accomplished. In a drilling machine, but with the help of an attachment. Similarly, by using different types of attachments, you can produce different types of jobs. There are a lot of examples. If there is a real need or if there is a challenge, then various kinds of jobs can be done, even in ordinary drilling machines. But you have to use appropriate jig fixture, then some at, uh, attachment like tapping attachment and different types of tools and so on. So these drilling machines are really quite versatile. It can do many many types of work. From very job order production to mass production, to very less precision to very high precision, for small diameter to large diameter, for very soft material to uh, hard material, for very short length to high length. Next day we shall discuss on milling machine. Thank you.